Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today we're going to be shooting some video on the Robo 3D printer. I've been seeing a lot of questions on the forum and the Facebook page for Robo 3D asking about how to deal with several of the problems that they've encountered. I've worked out most of the kinks, my printer's working awesome now, so now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing. So just stay tuned. <laughs> now I'm dizzy. Alright guys, here's my Robo 3D printer. Now if you guys watched my unboxing video when I took it out and everything, it was pretty much comes, it's, it's ready to go, pulled out of the box and run it. Except for I ran into some problems with the print head on this one in particular. And I also ran into some other problems, but they were common problems that other people were hitting, so I figured that I'd do a video on them. But I think I've got them all worked out now, because now the thing's printing beautifully. As a matter of fact, this right here, um, I actually printed this spool holder on this printer and it came out fantastic uh, on the first try. So, you know, that's how you know you've got it dialed in when it's actually printing really nice like this. So, let me go ahead and go over some of the modifications that I've made to this printer. All of them are relatively cheap. The print head's probably the biggest deal, but there's a lot of other little tweaks that improve your print quality and I'm going to show you right now. Well, we're already talking about the spool holder, so this I recommend printing because normally the spool hangs off the side on uh, this little dowel that comes with it, and the dowel tends to, to you know fall down and the material moves, and plus it has to pull the material up over the edge here and through the little hole there, and it just creates a lot of resistance. So when the feeder is trying to pull the material through, sometimes it'll skip and you'll get some misfeeds, and then you end up with like little blotches and little empty spots all over your print. So this is very, very easy to print. I'll put the link to it on Thingiverse right in the description and uh, it's a pretty quick print I think it only took like an hour and a half or two hours and you print this out it fits perfectly in these little grooves and now the materials fed down right from the spool into the machine and there's zero resistance well I can't say zero you guys will nail me for that okay there's less resistance and you can even print a version that has some room to hold tools which I thought was pretty cool all right another quick modification that I made here is you can see this McDonald's straw right here um, I cut a little piece of length and I fed it down because there is no Bowden tube on this machine. So what can happen sometimes is if it pulls on the material and, and the spool moves, it can pull too much material down and then you start ending up with material tangled around inside the machine and everything like that. Just putting this little piece on it keeps it straight from the print head no matter what and then if it overfeeds a little bit you don't run into as many problems. So that's a simple little mod to fix the solution and honestly you can make the straw longer. I just already cut this one at one point for another product. Project, so it was short, but you'd probably want a really long straw if you can actually get away with it. All right, here's the old print head that gave me problems, and the problems were down inside of it. There was a little nylon tube in there, and it basically melted, and it was causing oozing inside, so you couldn't get any kind of consistent material coming out of it. And plus, it jammed really frequently, and it was just, I mean, it was hard to deal with. So first thing I did was get rid of it, and I got an E3D print head that's milled from solid aluminum. You can kind of see it back there a little bit behind the, the active cooling. And it's got an active fan that blows air through it to keep it nice and cool, and I haven't had a single jam on this print head and it'll literally feed any material. It is an absolutely fantastic print head. It's fairly easy to install. You just have to wire it into the power supply on the Robo for the active cooling, this guy right here. And uh, I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, here's the underside of the Robo and this is the Adreno or Arduino or whatever freaking processing unit that drives the whole thing. And what I found is I used my multimeter and I found out that the two rails that are coming in here, there's two 12 volt rails that come in off of the DC power supply here. So I went ahead and grabbed one of them. You can see the grounds on the outside and the powers on the inside one right here. And I run these up through the spool into the machine and I use it to power both my LEDs and the active fan. And the nice thing about it is when I turn the printer on, the active cooling already turns on for the print head and all the LEDs turn on and I don't have to manage a separate power source. Now the LEDs and that fan use so minimal power, I wouldn't worry about overloading anything. Here we can get a little bit of a better look at that E3D print head. You can see it's all like milled aluminum. It is so nice. And then that fan just keeps constant air spraying through there. You can see I broke that a little bit right there. But the nice thing about that is if you break it, you just print another one and stick it on there. And it doesn't get hot enough to melt because the heat transfer, the, I mean, the, it, the cooling on this thing's phenomenal, guys. Damn it, I hate it when I break stuff doing reviews. All right, well, everybody knows you need to add some LEDs because it's really hard to tell if the printer is on or off. So the LEDs really help with that indication and it lights the platform. So if I reach around on the back, hit the power, you can see right there, it powered up and I have LEDs in the top. Let's see if we can get a good look at them here. You can see they're just two LED bars from Fry's Electronics. Hopefully you guys can get a good look at those. 
and I actually have them wired in through that yellow and black cable. And then I also branch off that power and follow all the way down here. And that's where the power goes for the fan. And you can see right here, if we pull this over, you can see that fan is zipping along nicely. One other quick thing to note is you do have to print a new fan shroud. If you get that E3D print head, make sure that you print this print shroud from Thingiverse. I have the link in the description um, because the metal one that comes with the machine interferes with the print head and you won't be able to put it together. So make sure you print that part first, guys. All right, here's another cool mod that I did. You can see this is the feeder wheel right here and the hobble bolt goes right through there. I noticed that there was a lot of slop in it. If you reach in your machine right now and you move the wheel back and forth, you'll see the wheel will move and the bolt won't. So it, it'll like, and there's quite a bit of slop. I would say that, I mean, you, you, you can move it like more than that. Um, so what I did is I took the nut off the end and I wrapped it in captain tape because the captain tape's really thin. You could probably also use Teflon tape or something like that. Wrap it a couple times, uh, put the bolt back in there, pressure fit it in there with your finger really good and then feed the hobbled bolt through and it takes out all that slop. And what this is gonna do is when retraction is happening, when it retracts and push back, you're not gonna have that slop leaving little spots where too much material or not enough material comes out. And I found that just doing that single little mod there cleaned up a lot of the boogers that were on my prints. Now, one more quick thing you wanna check when you get your printer is this little guy over here. This is the switch for your vertical axis and it tells it when to stop. When I received my printer, it went out the other direction. So it started on the inside and went up to the outside. And so it, the pressure to push it down was always wrong. So if that's the case, push it around and just make it sure it's oriented the same way that I have mine right here. And it'll save you a hell of a lot of bed leveling issues. All right, another important modification that I did was to print these guys up here. You see these? This is a stabilizer. And if you look in the description of the video, I'll have a link to it. And you print this guy out here and what it does is it holds your vertical rod to the case so that it has no slop in it. So if you look, I've got one on that side too, up there. And these things help a lot, especially if you're printing a model that's tall. Because if you notice that as stuff gets taller, it starts getting more misaligned and worse off. It's because the higher this thing goes, the print head going back and forth is producing weight on the carriage, and that carriage is able to bend these back and forth because they're only supported down here at the bottom. If you look right here, hopefully this is in focus. So what this does, this also supports them at the top. Now, if you reach into your robo machine right now and you grab these up high and just push on it with your finger, oh my God, they move like, like easy, super easy. Now look what I'm doing here. They don't move at all. I used 3M double stick tape, that is same adhesive used for body panels on cars. You could also use super glue if you wanted. Um, and I put these in place and now they hold that vertical rod completely solid. So now when that carriage is going up and down, it can't move side to side or back and forth. And that's gonna make a huge improvement on your prints, guys. All right, I wanna show you guys a couple tips and tricks that I learned along the way as far as operating the printer. And probably the, mo the number one trick I use is I get the bed as level as I can. So I bring these down, I get as level as I can. But when I start printing, I watch I basically tell it in the slicing software that I want it to go around the perimeter multiple times. And as it goes around the perimeter, I watch it to see how thick the material is on the platform. Is it barely showing? Is it not sticking? And what I do is I just simply grab the rods on both sides and turn them the same amount. Just turn them up or down a little bit while it's printing until the consistency is perfect. And then once it is, I leave it alone and the rest of the print goes fantastic. But I found that that works a hell of a lot better than trying to get it perfectly level on both sides and then starting the print and then realizing that the, it, it just wasn't perfect. I like, while it's printing, I do that final little calibration. You just reach in there, you just turn the screw a little bit and that's it. Well guys, that concludes all the modifications that I've made to my Robo 3D. I really hope that this helps the community out and I hope this gets people to get better prints out of the Robo 3D. Realize this is a $700 printer, even 600 if you don't get the ABS stuff. And other printers like the Ultimaker, I mean, yeah, they're a little bit more turnkey, they're a little bit more accurate out of the box, but they also cost like $2,000. So I've put, I think, 100, I think the print head was about $100 with the new thermistor and everything, it was about 100 bucks. And every other mod I made to this thing was printed on the printer itself because they don't have to be perfect. The prints that you make don't have to be perfect to create the parts you need to get to better prints. And uh, 
those few little parts, I mean, cost of material, right? And a McDonald's straw. I mean, go buy a Happy Meal and you're good to go, right? So, and uh, and now this printer, now granted, it's not it's not super fast. I mean, I'm still printing at 50 millimeters a second. I could probably crank it up to 75 with those vertical supports in there. I just haven't tried yet. Um, so it's not as fast as a lot of the 3D printers, but the thing is now it's accurate. So far, the couple of things that I printed, like for, in for instance, I printed this. I haven't installed this part yet, but this is a cable holder for uh, the print head to basically just hold the cable in place better so that it, all those wires aren't loose and flopping around. And I printed this and I mean, it came out fantastic. And this was printed at two millimeter or uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height. And it came out awesome. And when I was trying to print this stuff before all the mods, especially the print head, I mean, it was impossible. I could not get a good result out of this printer. So guys, hang in there. If you're having problems, invest in an E3D print head, take your time, get these mods installed, and I guarantee you're gonna have a way better experience. And the printed, I haven't had any problems with the heated bed. A lot of people have said they've been having problems with the heated bed, I haven't. Mine's holding perfectly at 70 degrees and everything I print with a little hairspray on the surface sticks like a magnet. So let me know if you guys are still having problems with that. Maybe I'll do a little more investigation into it, but uh, hope this video gave you guys a nerdgasm. I hope it boosted your confidence in the Robo 3D printer. And realize any printer that you buy that you're going to build yourself for $500 or $700 is going to have all kinds of quirks you're going to have to work out. It's just the nature of the beast. This is 3D printing, guys. In five years, you'll be buying these probably from Epson and Hewlett Packard, and they'll just be turnkey solutions that you put a cartridge in, like an ink cartridge that costs $5,000 for two and a half feet of spool. And and that's what people are a lot of people are going to do. But I'm glad I'm in on the ground floor, and I hope you're getting in on the ground floor too. So anyways, guys, hope this gave you a nerdgasm. Till next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.